that's 1.066 PGD, billion gallons per day, and 1229 MGD. And you can see right here that if we did, if we simulated the aquifers individually, you know, with the Cretaceous, the Florida, and the flavor, and we added them all up, we got a minimum of 166, 1,166, a maximum 1433. If we did them all together, we all pumped them together, the minimum went down to 1055. You know, so it went from 160, 1166 MGD to 1055 MGD. It is a measurable uh, decrease, but as I said, it was a small, it was a small decrease. So there is some interaction, but it's, it's a very, you know, it doesn't really affect the numbers. The maximum went from 1433 to 1240. So again, if we pump them all together, we do get a decrease in the sustainability, but it's a small, it's a small percentage. <coughs> okay. Now, this is what uh, is going on with Florida. Uh, NFSCG, the North Florida, Southeast Georgia Regional Groundwater Flow Model. North Florida, Southeast Georgia Technical Team Meeting. And as you can see, the last technical team meeting was in July, you know, July 1, at the beginning of this month. And it was a conference call, and I was a member of the conference call. So this is this is what they're doing in the park. Now, they're going to model. They're going to model northern Florida, and you see southeast Georgia right here. So their model area is something like that. This is the boundary condition on the model right here. So you see it goes something like that. And the region, your region, is right in here. So you're right in the middle of the model. Uh, the model overview, this is the uh, padding on the back of Florida did it for themselves. About 60,000 square miles. It's five times bigger than another model. Six times larger. 11 times larger, they're going to use mod flow, which is what we use for the state water plan model. It's 2,500 foot on a model grid. Now, our regional model, our regional coastal plan model, was a mile aside on the grid. It's a mod flow model, so it's all block centered flow, but it's a model the grid was a mile on the side. And when we did the sub regional models, which we calculated sustainable yield from, we decreased the grid size to 2,000 feet, so we're about the same layers. Seven layers, and this is all seven layers within the Florida aquifer, uh, HSFP, hydrologic simulation, P, for cream. What does the P stand for? Program. 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 Hydrologic simulation program, for cream. That's what HSFP means and then doing a steady state calibration, which is the same thing we did for our sustainable yield. So Florida is doing a steady state for the year 2001 and 2009. So they're not doing a fancy transient. And these are some simulated potentiometric surface maps. Uh, you can see the Savannah area cone of depression right here and right here. You see the uh, St. Mary's cone of depression right here, which uh, has since uh, stopped, has disappeared when they stopped operating the Durango paper mill, and the drawdowns in Florida. So, you know, the Florida line is about here. So, much of this at North Florida, South East Georgia model is in Georgia. And this is uh, the latest schedule. This is the this is from the uh, uh, July 1 slide. They're going to do a final test calibration. Test is a parameter estimation program within the program that, uh, that you use to calibrate it sometimes. They're going to end 
the, on the, uh, the schedule right now is the end of September 2015, they're going to finish the test calibration. Now, I checked an earlier presentation from the uh, St. Uh, this is being done by the St. John's Water Management District. And I checked something earlier that the uh, St. John's River Water Management District, and I found uh, they were going to finish the pest calibration by the end of June 2015. Yeah. So now it's September 2015, and I'm sure we'll check it next month. It'll be it's October or November. You know, so you know, it's off. It off that's obviously wrong. That is. Jim, what are you doing with the HSPS? What? What are they using the HSPS? I don't know. Because we gave them the input for our LSPC, because those were models were the same models, same code. We gave them the input for our LSPC. I models. think they're so using the HSPF to look at uh, the MF one. The baseball, go ahead. The baseball, yeah, yeah. the screen phone. Like what we talked about this morning. Because they're in their, uh, in Florida, the. Uh, Florida aquifer, the limestone aquifer, is at the surface. It feeds a lot of streams and a lot of springs. And that's different in Georgia because just in the Dari Plain in southwest Georgia, we have that situation. For the rest of the, for the, rest of the state, the Florida aquifer is confined beneath the Miocene age set. So they don't have the same interaction with the spring. Yes. The, uh, the springs that come up in Elk Muggy, they're not coming out of uh, Florida. The, the streams are, yes. No, the, the springs that are coming up. The yeah. water, the groundwater that's coming up in the springs on yeah. that that, that is That's the, the sub area four. That's where they're coming No, that's up. not in sub area four. What? No, that's on the Oak Muggy. Oak Muggy. Oak Muggy. Like uh, Abbeville, Georgia. Oh. And, no, then I guess it, not. The east side of the state, not the west side. Oh, yeah. No. The, the, North the, Central. Different different springs. Different springs. That, uh, Springs out of the uh, uh, Lyceum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, you put that mall up there in the Flint River, and, it, and that's, was that part of the Flint River that you were doing? Yeah. What, 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 and it's sustainable way above what we use it. Why we shut down over there? Because um, people have permits. Oh. You more won't matter. You spoke like a true driller. <laughs> you will do. Right? <laughs> you got a permit. You're allowed to pump them out of water. What if you hadn't got a permit? Well, the Juby pumping. Oh. It's talking about the moratorium that we have the on the and the board now. Yeah. I know what he's talking about. <laughs> This is Jim dancing. I always have to go into it. I'm going to make Jim go. I know what he's talking about. But I was just watching all that, what he was showing me, and then all of a sudden, we had a moratorium. Why are we in a moratorium for? Ten miles away from the plant. Keep dancing, Jim. Keep dancing. That decision is made above my head. <laughs> I like it. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Good morning. Three, three floors. Three floors. Three floors. <laughs> three floors up. Jim, this morning we were talking repairing rides. There is no repairing rides. Jim, what if their model shows something totally different than what our models are showing? Who's there? Florida's. Florida. What if Florida's model is totally different? Uh, at that point, I'll speak up. I'm very quiet on the conference. At that point, I'll speak up and I'll say, um, are you sure you have that right? Because it's very different than our calibrated, carefully calibrated model. And so I'm holding, uh, I'm keeping the powder dry and see if that's the situation. They have not calibrated at all. They have given none of their calibration results out. Do they have yours? Do Florida have yours? Yes. yes. Okay. Do they know what? They have yeah. some expectation. Yes. Yeah, we provided them both the surface of the LSPC model, which is the same as MHSP, we provided Georgia, and then you provided yes. the ground model. So yes. we provided them our models. They know what our results are. Yes. 
And I will be provided them five years ago, five yeah. or four years ago. They could have you got some geologists from uh, Iraq. I mean, Iran. <laughs> and they negotiated it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we agree with it. Mr. Kerry, we agree that, that, that that's it, right? Right? Well, you know, we drill in Florida, too, and we can also drill up here. You can go to Florida and drill when you can't up here. Now, that is something that you can deal with Governor Scott with. But what I'm talking about is that they come from a right down there. Iran, I mean, it's not Iran, it's Iran. That's a negotiation down there. Am I not right? What? Huh? Other questions for Jim? <laughs> We're going to see, does anyone else have any questions for Jim? This is commentary, yes. I've got one. How many gallons per acre inch do you figure? Is it somewhere around 28,000 gallons that you, it takes to put up? Yeah, that's what it's like. They didn't put a border on that. 27,154. There you go. Check. I was dividing 39,000. Oh, you stand up? What'd you get? What'd you get? That's right. You. I think it's important to, to, to screw the context of that model. Um, we that, scared what the outcome is. The reason I'm asking is uh, the 48 million per day. Is that averaged out over the 365 days a year, or is that, or are you just talking about days that farmers are pumping water? Which number are we talking about? The, uh, the uh, I think it was 48 million gallons per day. And that was the water. The water water use they should have watched you. Water water. No, no, it's to, it's a uh, it's uh, a. I, I want to say 120. It's 120 day growing. Growing season. No longer growing. It's coming in from Georgia. Yes, just the growing season. And that, that didn't come up to like 1,758 acres of land. That's why I don't know. It's way more than that. Yeah, that's just like. I don't know. I don't have. I'd have to go check it out. We can. Um. Um. That's good question. Yeah. Are you annualizing that number? No. The sustainable yield is for uh, during a, a irrigation. So you can, you can pump that much for irrigation. And I, and I was referring so like to the agriculture demand. It's like number. the worst day of the year when you pump it. Well, it's you know, not really the worst day. It's, a, it's, it's the worst day. It's average dry. over a one month period. Of a dry year. Yes. You know what? What I'm talking about over, is over there in the, in, the, in the Flint River, you turn your pumps off, and the water level comes, and, they, and the wells start flowing. Mm -hmm. Don't let the Fish and Wildlife Service hear that. Yeah, it's the truth. They're gonna say, "We'll shut them off so we can keep these muscles alive." <laughs> That's the issue well, over yeah, there. Is the poor those wells are slightly different. Has a lot to do with it. Yeah, those muscles have a lot to do with it. Yeah, they do. You know, in the uh, Flint River. There, the Florida aquifer is on the cement pond, and that's the unit that you understand. You know, in Sewanee's uh, Council, the aquifer that we uh, model is, you know, down in the river. So it's so it, it, it flows up to a certain level. Yes. But the water level is deep. It doesn't interact with any of our streams. Of don't do much over there, yeah. That's just a, that's those Iran people just said. <laughs> Ten miles away from the river, he'll agree with me, but he can't afford to. If I agree or disagree, I can't do anything about it. your job. You can and not can even that. <laughs> All right. I think too, as the as the facilitator here, I appreciate Liz and Jim coming down today and providing y'all with kind of some, some information just to get you thinking and remind you of some of the work that went in 
and, and so that you know things do continue to move forward and, and, and work is being done to, to make sure that these plans are uh, the best they can be with good and accurate information. So thank you both of you for being here today. I'm glad we uh, I'm glad we got that information again because we get a lot of discussion about it. You know, a lot of folks um, over this period of time that we those of us have been here the whole time. It seems like more people are at least tuning in a little bit to our water situation. Obviously, we're in the paper a lot, so we get a lot of questions about well, how much water do we have? You know, and that's a little bit tougher question to answer, but at least we have some idea. And I think the I've said this on more than one occasion in public. Uh, I think that our data that we get is probably as good as we could expect. Um, you know, it's, there's obviously some, uh, always going to be some error in that kind of data, but I, I, I have a good bit of confidence in our models. Um, and it'd be interesting to see what comes out of Florida, but Granny knows what's going to come out of Florida. So, uh, anyway, I, I want to thank you guys too because it's. Uh, it's important information. Sometimes it, uh, I had a question come up last time, and I'm not sure where we saw it. Jim, you might remember, but um, there was some data that came out of Jacksonville, and there was a question at the last meeting about where the actual, I had quoted something that we had seen in the past, and, and, and the Florida folks were claiming that that wasn't accurate. So. Um, I think it's going to be very important for us to keep up. It seems like there's been a little shift, like some of that blame was on Jacksonville, and now it's starting to shift more to Georgia. That's the feel I get on that. Uh, I can say that in this meeting because we don't really have those guys, so maybe they can explain that mentality a little bit. But um, anyway, uh, I think it's going to be important for us going forward, especially on our for our ag people, to have an idea of what our resource is there and uh, that's what Grady's talking about. We, we need to kind of start fighting for it because I think the blame's starting to be shifted. The blame's starting to be shifted on us. And, uh, so. Yeah, Jacksonville yeah, is going to be a problem for someone with. Yeah. We're using all the water for it to get so. Well, but it goes in the ocean before it starts in the Jacksonville. But. Yeah, they need, they need to use their resource. They have the largest river in this hemisphere, they could probably use some surface water over there. That's not, that's, that's not the opinion of the council. We'll move on to the... Uh, <laughs>